In today's video, we continue working on the spreadsheet we created in the last video, Build Your Own Roulette Probability Distribution Tracker Part 1. So please make sure you have completed that before you start. This video is divided into two parts. In the first part, we update the graph to include the expected values, so it's much easier to see the outliers in the data. Then we duplicate the worksheet, so each bet size has its own page. In the second part of this video, we will add our own roulette functions to Excel, making it easier to enter the spin data and allowing us to update multiple graphs at the same time. Monitoring the dozens and columns simultaneously, or all of the even money bets, increases our chances of finding outliers in the data from a live game, making it easier to identify suitable bets. Right, let's go. First, let's ensure everyone's screen matches. Click on the graph and check all the data is selected, if not drag the handle down until it is. Clear any data you have in the green area and enter these values. Two, four, six, one, two, three, six, six, five, five, four, four, three, three, two, two, one, one. Check your graph resembles ours. We are going to put some of the basic information from the truth tables onto the worksheet. You don't have to type this information in, but you may find it a useful reference later. Starting in N5 and working down, let's type lines, 9s, 12s and 18s. We will say it like this as the 12s can of course include the dozens and columns, and the 18s can cover any of the even money bets. The values indicate the specific numbers you will input into the green area. Aims represent all potential combinations that can be derived from these values, while ways denotes the number of ways the numbers we are aiming for can be attained. Right. With that done, we can get started on the spreadsheet itself. In A1, we will type ways, and under this, we need to put how many ways there are to make the value shown in the aim column. If you remember back to the original probability distribution chart for the dice, which are similar to the six pocket line bets, you can see there is only one way to get a value of two, and so on until you reach the middle of the rows, where there are six ways to get a seven. Once you reach the midway point, the number of ways decreases back down to one. To check we have done this correctly, type total ways into A13, put this formula into A14 and press return. You should now see you have 36, which matches with the information from the truth tables. OK, in C13 type processed, and in C14 type the following formula, then press enter. C14 should now show 17, which is the number of results we have under the combined column. Great. In D1, we are going to write expected, then in the cell below, type this formula. Let's right-click on D2 and reduce the decimal places to 2. Then drag the handle down to D12. Let's click on the chart to highlight its data. Then we are going to drag the data handle across to include our new column. You can see our chart now has expected values. To make the chart easier to read, let's customize it a bit. Click on one of the orange bars to select it, then right-click and change the fill colour to dark grey. With the bar still selected, right-click it again and choose Format Data Series. In the right-hand panel, make sure the bar button is selected so we can alter the series options. Set the series overlap to 50% and the gap to 75%. This will make reading our data much easier. Click on the plus sign at the top right of the chart. Click the expandable menu at the end of Legend and select Bottom. Now click anywhere on the worksheet to deselect the chart. Fantastic, it's starting to look good. Let's save our work, then carry on. We are at the stage where we will need to have a separate worksheet for each size of bet, so let's go to the tab at the bottom, right-click it and choose Rename. Let's call this sheet PT-Lines-V1. Press Enter, then right-click the tab again and choose Move or Copy. In the pop-up window, tick Create a Copy and press OK. Right-click on the New Sheets tab and rename this worksheet to PT-9s-V1. We need to make some adjustments to this worksheet, so click on the chart and drag the data handle up four rows. It should end underneath the 8 in the Aim column. We can now select cells A9 to D12 and press Delete. We need to change the values in the Ways column. Locate the centre of the data, which is row 5, then decrease the values beneath it. If you look at the value in A14, it should match with the information we added earlier. 
the values entered under the roulette column belong to the line bets, so let's delete them and put a few example spins in with values from 1 to 4. Well, that's it for the 9s. So let's right-click on its tab at the bottom and make another copy. We will rename our new worksheet PT-12s-V1 and press Enter. You have probably already guessed what's coming next. Click on the chart, then drag the data handle up under the 6, then select the redundant data and press Delete. The middle of the data for our 12s is row 4, so again we just decrease the values below and check A14 matches the information from our truth table entries. We are doing well, we just need to repeat the process one more time for the 18s. Let's right click on the tab at the bottom again and choose move or copy. Click create a copy and press OK. Then rename the new sheet PT-18s-V1. I probably don't even need to say it. However, click on the chart and drag the data handles up under the 4 and change cell A4 to a 1. Delete the redundant data and we are done. Great job. Make sure you save your work. You now have four different bet size probability trackers, all with the ability to show the expected values alongside the actual values, which really helps you to focus on the outliers. Stay with us for part two as we take the 12s and 18s to a whole new level. We have already used some of Excel's built-in functions in our worksheets, like COUNTIF, for example. However, Excel functions only go so far. For our tracker to move up a few gears, we need to add some of our own roulette-specific functionality. Hidden behind all of Microsoft's Office applications is an IDE, or Integrated Development Environment. It's here that we can add specific abilities to Excel. We are entering the world of programming, but don't worry, you will be surprised how easy it is. Let's just briefly overview what we are about to do so it makes more sense when we do it. A function is just a small bite-sized program that receives information in and returns information back. You can probably guess what this function will do by its name. Instead of having to type in which dozen won, you can type in the actual pocket that won, and the function will return one, two or three. This way we can update multiple graphs just by entering the pocket that won and let a number of functions do all the work. Let's read the code to see if it makes sense. We have added comments in, you do not have to have them so we can hide them for now. Let's assume 23 just won, the value gets passed into the function, it is checked against the lists, and if the input value is found, the program finishes by returning the appropriate output value. The case else statement is there in case anyone types in a wrong value, it simply returns a zero if the input value is not found, so our charts won't get any bad data. There, we told you it was simple. To any programmers watching and crying, please note, this code was designed for its readability using the minimum amount of VBA language. It is not intended as production code, it's simple and it works. Right, let's get back to it. To add and use our code in Excel, we must save the file with a .xlsm extension, which is a macro-enabled workbook. So, click on File and choose Save As. Click on More Options if you need to, and save the file to your chosen location, making sure you alter the extension. Great, right, next. We need to click on the Developer tab. If you do not have this visible in your version of Excel, then right-click on any of the other tabs and choose Customize the ribbon. Look down on the right-hand panel and make sure Developer is ticked. Go to the Developer tab and click on Visual Basic. The editor should magically appear. Fabulous. Now don't worry if yours looks different to ours, but let's try and get the important panels open, which can all be found on the view menu. All we need is the project panel, the properties panel, and we can open the immediate panel as well. You can move them all about and dock them as you wish. If there are any code windows open, you can close them. Shrink down any of the open files, just expand our tracker. Now we should have something similar. Each worksheet can have its own functions, but we want our functions to be available to all worksheets so we're going to put our code into a module. Right-click on the project, choose Insert, then Module. Let's expand the window. This is where we are going to create our five new functions. These are easy to read through and understand. When you have typed in the first function, you can easily copy and paste it like it was a template, then simply edit it. Remember if you are copying and pasting to change the function names everywhere they appear. And of course, check your list values carefully or your charts will be wrong. You can test these functions at any time in the immediate panel. Type a question mark followed by the function name and put a value from 1 to 36 in the brackets, then press Enter. 
you can see if you get the result you would expect. We are going to scroll down the screen slowly so you can copy our functions. Hopefully, you have entered all the functions and tested them. It's time to put them to work in our spreadsheets. Press the Save button, then File. Close and return to Excel. OK, this is the exciting bit. Make a copy of the 18's worksheet and name it V2. Click the View menu, then Freeze Panes and choose Unfreeze Panes. Right-click on the top left corner of the worksheet and choose No Fill. Click on Row 1, then holding the Shift key down, now click on row 15. Move into the selected area, right click and choose insert. Now we have some space to work with. Click on the chart and drag it to the corner, then resize it to about halfway across column F. Click on the charts plus sign and add a chart title. Change the chart title to red equals one, forward slash and black equals two. In A14 type pocket, in the next cell type value, move along again and type combined. We can delete some of the blank space so click on row 23, hold the shift key down, click on row 27, then move into the selected area, right click and choose delete. We no longer need the truth table information on this worksheet, so we can delete that too. Now click on row 25, hold the shift key down and click on row 26, move into the selected area, right click and choose insert. That's brilliant, we are making good progress. Select from A20 all the way across and up to F1, then right-click and choose Copy. Next, select G1, right-click and choose Paste. Do the same for M1. We can delete the word Pocket from G14 and M14. Now let's change the chart titles to Odd and Even, then Low and High respectively. We have been asked to extend the number of spins the charts can monitor, so we will. But remember, the more spins you enter, the closer the results will get to their expected probability or pattern. The larger pocket bets will approach their expectation quickest. The outliers become minimal, harder to spot, and predictions become less accurate. This is covered in detail in the hidden patterns found in Roulette Video Part 2. Anyway, this video is focused on building the tracker, so let's get back to it. Click on C17 and edit the second value in the function, so the range is now from row 29 to row 229, which allows for a 200 spin range. Now drag C17 down to C19 to update the other cells. Do the same for the other two charts as well. When that's done, update C24 in the same way. In A27 type pocket, then change B27 to value. Select B27 down to C34 and press Ctrl C to copy, then click in H27 and press Ctrl V to paste then paste again into N27. You should see the value and combined columns line up. Click on the odd even chart. You can see it isn't connected to the right data, so grab the bottom bar and drag it to the right. It's okay for the aim column to stay where it is. Do the same for the low high chart. You can see the charts have reverted to their default colors, so feel free to change the colors as you wish. We like to stick with purple for the results and gray for the expectations. There, that looks better. Let's delete all data from row 30 down to row 40. Then we will set the fill color to green from A28 to A34 and enter in a few fake roulette results. Let's use 23, 35, 7 and 24. Excellent. And the moment we've all been waiting for, we are now ready to use our own functions. In B28, type the following formula and press return. Drag the cell down a few places, then match it by dragging the combined column cell down a bit as well. We are going to do the same for the odds evens, so click on H28 and use the get odd even formula, then drag it down a few rows and do the same for the combined column. Guess what's next? You've got it. In N28, use the get low high formula and drag both the columns down a bit. At this point, even with just a few spins entered, you can see the charts are all different. Select the bottom row of formulas from A34 to O34 and drag them all the way down to row 200. 
Click on A15, then click on the View menu. Select Freeze Panes, then choose Freeze Panes. We are wondering if anyone will make it this far. If you have, maybe you should give yourself a public pat on the back in the comments below. We still have the dozens to do, but that will be easy. Now we have the 18's worksheet to copy. However, before we do that, here's a useful bonus tip for you. We're going to show you how to lock the worksheet, except for the green area, so you don't accidentally alter the formulas. It's simple to do and stops you from making costly mistakes if you're using this with a live game. So, select all of the green cells, then right click and choose Format Cells. On the Protection tab, uncheck Locked and choose OK. Once that's done, go to the Review tab and click Protect Sheet. There is no need to put a password in, just uncheck Select Locked Cells, then press OK. Now your worksheet is completely protected from accidental typos when you are entering spin results. Let's type in some fake results, and you can see that most of the formula cells get hidden, leaving us a nicer looking area to work with you will also find you cannot click anywhere else on the worksheet. If you ever want to alter the formulas, you can simply unprotect the sheet, and you will see us do this in a minute when we work on a copy of this worksheet for the 12s. Right, last job for today. Let's make a copy of the 18s V2 and rename it PT-12s-V2. As we were just saying, the first thing we need to do is unprotect the worksheet. We only need two charts for the 12s, so we can delete one. Select column M, hold down the Shift key and click column R, then move down into the selected area, right click and choose Delete. Now click on B28. We need to change the function to our Get Dozen version, then drag it down to row 200. Let's do the same for the columns using the Get Column function, then again drag it down to row 200. Go back up to the charts and change the titles to Dozens and Columns respectively. You can see there are not enough bars on our charts, so we need to add some data. Go to A19 and change the value to a 3, and following the familiar pattern we've seen before, reduce the values underneath it down to 1. Select B19 to D19 and drag down two rows. Now do the same for the columns data. When you have done that, click back on each chart and link them to the data. OK, brilliant. Well done, the chart is finished, so switch the protection back on and it's ready to use. So, that is it for part two, but we would like to share two more bonus tips with you. The first tip is for those who want to use their worksheets as simulators to understand what might happen on a live game without having to type in lots of spins. Excel can provide you with as much random data as you wish, so let's try an example. Clear the green area, you will see the charts return to nothing, then click on A28 and type in the RAND between formula. You can drag the formula down for as many rows as you wish. Each time you move the drag handle up or down a bit, Excel will give you fresh data to look at. Try this with both the 12s and 18s and notice the differences in results for similar quantities of simulated spins. If the gambler's fallacy was true, then you would get random looking purple bars. If however, probability is playing its part, then as you increase the number of spins you observe, the pattern in the data will always get closer to the expectation, proving there are predictable patterns in seemingly random independent spin results. Okay, our last tip of the day may seem obvious to some of you, but not for everyone. When you finish today, clear out all the fake data or random functions from the green areas and save this spreadsheet with a file name like templatetracker.xlsm. Then each time you play, Open the template file and use the save as command to make a copy, changing the name to something like the date and spins for example. That way you always have a clean spreadsheet to start with, and you can keep all of your sessions for later analysis. We hope you have enjoyed this video, and it brings you some value. If you are still awake, then we would really appreciate a like, even better a subscribe. Thanks for watching, see you next time.